Now, when I hear swing cash, I think WNBA champion, all-star MVP, WNBA legend. Now you were instrumental in helping grow this league that is now celebrating 25 years this year. And I remember in your 2016 retirement speech, how you said you hoped that the women of the WNBA would continue to grow the game. How have you seen them grow the game since what, Brett, five years since your retirement? Yes, I think the women of the WNBA have done a phenomenal job of unifying under one voice, one mission, and that is to not only grow the league, um, but to use their platform for good. I mean, what they did last year in the bubble was phenomenal. Uh, the strides that they've made to uh, make the CBA better, for financially better for women, um, more you know maternity leave, things that needed to be in the CBA are now there. So I've been so proud of them. You talk about what happened last year specifically with the women and using their platform, but that made me think of a moment that involved you in 2016. I remember when you were fined and other players for wearing the shirts during warmth that said Black Lives Matter by the WNBA. Then last year, the actual league really, I thought, helped support and amplify the players' voices. What was it like for you to kind of watch how the league has progressed in that sense? Yeah, I mean, there's a time where you have to just make a stand and you have to use your voice and do what's right. And I always feel like the women, um, especially female athletes, WNBA athletes, have always been the progressive um, pro progressive people that understand what it means to fight for those who are marginalized. And to have Black Lives Matter not only be on the courts, but also to be on the jerseys, um, to have the Say Her Name campaign that they did last year, that's all because the women felt that they could use their platform for good. And so I'm just really, truly happy and honored to know that we went from protest to progress and the future is so bright for this league. And it's huge that only happened in a four year time, which actually that is such a short amount of time for such change. But when you talk about progress and seeing the league grow, I know here in Canada, we would love a WNBA team. When you look at the league, how it is now, do you see just an expansion in general in its future or it's still kind of murky waters? It has to happen. The expansion mm -hmm. has to happen. There are too many amazing athletes that are coming out of college that are in the pros right now that deserve an opportunity to play in the best league in the world. Um, there aren't enough spots. Um, I have been an advocate. I keep screaming it from the rafters that we have to start investing in the expansion of the WNBA. We have the new CBA that's intact right now. You have the momentum. You have corporate response, corporations understanding their responsibility to be for equality, for women to start investing in women and betting on women. But now you have to expand and give the opportunity for women. I would love to see a team in Toronto. I hope that we can get to that point. Um, I, I look at players like Kia Nurse that's, that's from Toronto, uh, players that I know would love an opportunity to come back home and play in front of fans in Canada. Hey, look at you. And you know now you have this historic role with the Pelicans and you retired in 2016. I don't know if you know what the word retirement means, but I totally get it. You've done so, so many things after. How do you balance this all, the work of life and different opportunities and being such a role model in the community? Like that has to be a struggle of time as well. Yeah, I think it's, it's all about work-life balance. Um, the one thing that I always wanted to do, I wanted to be a mom. Um, I never wanted to give up on, on that hope. And so I had an amazing playing career and that was beautiful and I was so blessed to do that. But as I embarked on the next chapter of my life, being married and having kids, I didn't want to stop with my aspirations to be in a front office. And so when the opportunity presented itself, um, yes, I'm here, I'm with the New Orleans Pelicans and have a phenomenal job and an opportunity, but it's also about growth in that space because as women, we all know, once you get one place, it's not about settling, it's about what's next for you. How are you growing as a woman, as a mom, as somebody that's in the front office? And so it's just about getting in those rooms and not just being the first, but making sure you're not the last. And that's how I approach it. And when I talk to young girls and young boys, cause I have two sons, I'm a boy mom. Um, but I want to normalize female in the workplace, females in it's male dominated in the NBA, but we need to normalize that. We need to normalize that I was in a war room. We're working 12 hour days. We're in there, the negotiations are happening, draft prep, all that stuff's happening. And my belly literally, 
out to this screen right now. And we still normalize being a mom and being in that room. And I'll never forget um, this last draft uh, I got up and I was giving a high five to my boss, David Griffin, and somebody texted me and said, you have to be the first pregnant woman that I've seen in a war room in the NBA. And I said, well, that's the first I wasn't aiming for, but here we are. <laughs> I know that you used to be a track and field star. Has this been something you ever thought about trying to go back to lacing up again? You know, I love track and field. Um, if I could, I probably would try. Um, right now, I'm just trying to get, you know, my summer body back after delivering my son. I'm just trying to get into a nice swimsuit, have a nice vacation at some point. Lindsay, I, I have baby steps, but you never know. With the Olympics coming around the corner, yeah, I might give it a shot. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much for your time today, Swin. Thank you. Take care.